in Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 38, the word of God says, But in the month, the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was apostled from God into a city of Galilee, Nazareth by name, towards a virgin, having been betrothed to an adult male, Joseph by name, from the house of David. And the name of the virgin was Mary. And having gone into the house towards her, he said, that is, the angel said, Joy, having been made graceful, the Lord is with you. But the virgin was truly disturbed on the word, and used to truly calculate what quality this greeting may be. And the angel said to her, You must not be fearful, Mary, for you found grace with God. And look, you will conceive in your womb, and you will bring forth a son, and you will call his name Jesus. This one will be great, and he will be called Son of the Highest. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of David his father. And he will reign as king on the house of Jacob into the ages, and there will not be completion of his kingdom. And Mary said towards the angel, How will this be, since I do not know an adult male? And the angel, having answered, said to her, Holy Spirit will come on you, and the ability of the highest will shadow on you, on which account also the holy thing being begotten will be called Son of God. And look, Elizabeth, your family kinswoman, also she conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month for her, the woman being called barren because every spoken matter from God will not be unable. And Mary said, Look, the slave of the Lord, may it become to me according to your spoken matter. And the angel went away from her. The true Bible study explanation of these verses is as follows. During the month, emphatically and specifically, the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, that is, in December, the angel Gabriel was a apostle from God. He was sent forth or away from God on this specific mission or assignment into the city of Galilee, a city usually referred to a fortified or walled town, and in this case it was named Nazareth. On this occasion, Gabriel was apostle towards a virgin who was betrothed and continuing betrothed. She was promised by their families to an adult male, a grown man, whose name was Joseph, originating from the house of David. He was a descendant of King David. And the name of the virgin was Mary. At this time, Mary and Joseph were committed to each other out in marriage, but the scheduled time for them to consummate it had not yet arrived. So they were betrothed, but they did not yet consummate their marriage. After the angel went into the house where Mary was located towards her, he said, Joy. That means rejoice, you must joy. In this context, it was spoken as a form of greeting to her. Having been made graceful and continuing graceful, that means you have already been graced by God. He caused you to become graceful. You have received grace, and this truth has not changed. So what is grace? Grace is what is freely bestowed without any merit on the recipient's part. It includes reference to the attitude and quality of the one giving something favorable to another. Grace is not bestowed because somebody deserves a wage that is owed for something they said or did, nor because they begged so hard, nor because they forced the giver to give. Grace is bestowed because the giver wants to give by his own freedom of will to the recipient. It is completely unmerited favor from the giver to the recipient. 
The Lord is with you. That's referring to God by the name of Lord or Master. The Master, God, is in company and association with you. This is how Mary had been made graceful. But the Virgin was truly disturbed on the word, and that means she was thoroughly caused to be stirred up, agitated, resting her based upon the spoken account of God's inner thoughts which the angel said to her. And that's just like a normally calm pool of water is agitated or moves when something else is thrown into it, breaking through its surface and causing a rippling effect over the whole pool. And during that pastime, Mary was thoroughly calculating what quality this greeting may be. She was fully reckoning, completely reasoning, or disputing, or logically computing throughout what sort or how, what kind or manner would this salutation be. And the angel gave Mary some details by saying to her, you must not be fearful. It is imperative that you do not have fear. Don't be afraid, Mary. For you found grace with God. You came upon and received what God offers to you, which is bestowed unmerited or undeserved favor, at rest beside her, at or with him. And look, so that the angel is giving some details about what grace was given to her from God. Look, you will conceive in your room. You will become pregnant. And you will bring forth or produce a son. And you will call his name Jesus, and that is to designate and describe his, that son's, distinguishing and distinctive constitution, his character, quality, workings, etc. His name will be Jesus, emphasizing gracious salvation, as the angel explains in the following phrases. This one will be great, specifically this human being, will be large in magnitude, importance, measure, degree, estimation, quality, etc. And he will be called Son of the Highest. And the word Son emphasizes origin, quality, and essence. He will be spoken as given the name of being Son of the Most High. Rest referring to God, who is the most elevated, the most exalted. So this one, Jesus, will be great and he will be called Son of the Highest, Son of God. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of David his father. So this Jesus, the Son of God, will sit on King David's throne because he will be a descendant of who? King David, a legal heir to his ancestor's throne. And God promised David that this would happen. And he will reign as king on the house of Jacob into the ages. He will reign as king over his dominion. He will exercise his kingship, the royal ruler relating down on the household of Jacob, the man also named Israel, for or throughout the lifetimes, the duration of their lives, which is, in this case, forever, for all eternity. And there will not be a completion of his kingdom. And, of course, the word kingdom refers to all that is contained within his sovereignty, his kingly or royal dominion, government, rule, territory, power. It will not be completed in the sense of another kingdom being established after it. His kingdom will not have an ending. And Mary said towards the angel, so her question shows that she wanted to know more detail because she believed what the angel told her and she wanted to obey any instructions that he would provide to her from God. How will this be? In what manner will this exist since it is a fact that I do not personally know an adult male? And of course that's in the sense of not having an intimate sexual relationship with a grown man. Mary was still a virgin, and had not been sexually intimate with Joseph yet, because that time had not arrived. And the angel continues to explain by answering and saying to her, Holy Spirit, and that's referring to God himself, emphasizing the truth that he is spirit and he is holy or sanctified. This is his essence and realm of power, authority, and action. God, who is Holy Spirit, will come or go down on her, and the ability of the highest, 
the able power or capability of or from the Most High, the most elevated, the most exalted, emphasizing the truth that God is the Most High, will shadow on her, or put his shadow on you, in this case on Mary, overshadow you, you will be covered by and enveloped with the consistency of the Most High's ability. On account of this also the holy thing being begotten in you, or that which is sanctified, set apart from the state of being common, defiled, or unclean against God, what is being begotten within you is holy. That holy thing being begotten in you will be called a Son of God. This is emphasizing the origin, quality, and essence. And what is that? Son of God who is holy. And then the angel lets her know about Elizabeth. And look, behold, or see, in the sense of calling attention. Pay attention, Elizabeth, your family kingswoman, your relative. Also, emphatically, she has already conceived a son. She herself is pregnant with a son, and this fact is not changed. She's still pregnant in her old age. And this is the sixth month for her. So she is six months pregnant by this time specifically the woman who is being called barren. So people used to say about Elizabeth that she is sterile or she's barren. But at this time she was six months pregnant. Why? Because every spoken matter from God, all or everything that God speaks, and God being the source of it, will not be unable. And of course, the usage of the double negative figuratively emphasizes that definitely every one of them, everything that God says, every spoken matter, will not be lacking ability, incapable or without able power. In other words, it has ability. It is powerful. And Mary said, look, again, now she's calling attention the slave of the Lord. So she's calling herself the slave of the Lord, the Lord's bond servant. I serve as a slave to the master, a slave in the service category, bound to serve my master, who is God, the highest. May it become to me according to your spoken matters. May it come to pass, come into being, happen in accordance with what God says, which is what you, referring to the angel, are speaking to me, Mary. And at that time, the angel went away from her.